Today we're going to talk about an interesting new consensus protocol called Avalanche. But first, a short history of consensus. On the first day, Leslie Lamport and Barbara Liskoff created Classical Consensus. Classical Consensus doesn't really work well for a decentralized currency. All of the participating nodes have to know each other, and with such a high communication cost, it doesn't scale very well. So leaders in this style of consensus are usually elected by an authority, rather than having a way to drop in and out of the system. It's a permission network. And as such, Satoshi looked upon classical consensus and saw that it was not good for Bitcoin. On the second day, Satoshi Nakamoto created Nakamoto Consensus. Nakamoto Consensus allowed Satoshi to create the first real decentralized cryptocurrency. It differs mainly in that one, nodes don't have to know each other in the network, which allows for greater scale, and they can drop in and out at any moment. It's considered a permissionless network as anyone can come in and be a leader or a block producer. No central party decides to make them a leader. Competition decides through mining. And as such, Satoshi looked upon Nakamoto consensus and saw that it was good and created Bitcoin. But then, on the third day, Team Rocket created Avalanche Consensus. Avalanche is a new consensus protocol that is a bit different than the other two models. Instead of leaders being elected or earned through competition, Avalanche is leaderless in nature. Every node on the network has a vote. There are no especially privileged nodes running things. It's highly scalable in node count and very fast. Now I'm going to get absolutely destroyed in the comment section for making these analogies, but a simple analogy is that classical consensus is like a monarchy a royal family of nodes. Nakamoto consensus is sort of like a republic. Miners are like officials that sort of represent the will of the people. And avalanche would be like agorism or maybe a democracy without officials. It's the individual says what goes on without any elected official of any kind. It's leaderless in nature. Avalanche works in four stages. Slush, snowflake, snowball, and ends with avalanche. First, let's take a look at Slush. An avalanche network is made up of a large number of nodes. Each one of these nodes has three states, neutral, true, and false, which will be represented as uncolored, blue, and red. Now you wouldn't be able to see any white sticker, so yellow will be representing uncolored. Each node on the network starts off uncolored until it's faced with a transaction or decision where it will either vote red or blue, in this case blue. Once a color is chosen, your node queries a number of other random nodes on the network. If those queried nodes do not yet have a color, they will adopt the color of your node. If the majority of nodes queried have the same color, your node takes no action. If the majority of nodes are a different color, your node will flip to that color. Multiple rounds of querying will occur with different random nodes until the majority of the network is all on the same color and everyone is pretty much on the same page. What ends up happening is the side with the most support ends up winning in the end. If it's say 90% blue and 10% red, it will take a smaller number of queries to become all blue, whereas if it's 60% blue and 40% red, it might take a couple more rounds of querying to eventually reach all blue, but the side with the most votes should, in the end, have the say in consensus. Even in the worst case scenario of say a 50-50 network split, after enough rounds of querying are completed, the pseudo-randomness of the querying process will ensure that one side eventually has the upper hand and eventually consensus is reached. This is the general idea behind Avalanche and everything from this point just sort of builds off of it. The second part of Avalanche is Snowflake. Snowflake is when the network starts to gain a very short memory. Each node has a counter. For every slush query that returns the same color, the counter turns up one. Every time the node flips its color, the counter resets. 
When the counter reaches a high enough number, it'll lock in at this level and no longer flip with slush queries. The snowflake locking creates sort of an ending period to the slush cycle. Snowflake's memory is extremely short, only lasting until the node locks in or flips to another color. Nodes begin to have a persistent memory in the third part, Snowball. Snowball builds upon Snowflake by adding a state of confidence. This confidence counter holds a longer memory than Snowflake, changing color based off its confidence of past queries rather than simply based off of the consecutive color results of each node. This all leads up to part four, Avalanche, where everything ties together and becomes permanent. The confirmed transactions are appended to a data structure, in this case, an append only directed acyclic graph. And those are the basics on how consensus works within Avalanche. The whole process from the point the transaction is broadcast to finality should be extremely fast, happening within a couple seconds. Now it's important to note that Avalanche is not Sybil resistant in and of itself. You have to use it within a system of scarcity. One implementation we'll be exploring next is using Avalanche on top of a proof of work chain to add some extra benefits as the Bitcoin Cash chain is planning on doing. There is also a proof of stake implementation of Avalanche called AVA that we may do a video on in the future. Now quickly before I leave, many of you will be curious on how a double spend is treated in Avalanche. Basically another round of voting happens in a process very similar to Slush, Snowflake, and Snowball, but since it's a directed acyclic graph, they vote on not only the transaction itself, but on the parents and descendant transaction as well. In the event of a tie, the first scene rule is applied. This is a gross oversimplification, but the video is starting to drag on. We'll revisit the topic of double spends in the future uh, when we do some videos on different implementations of the Avalanche protocol.